Uh, and uh, thanks for, for coming, everybody. Uh, so uh, what we're covering here uh, with this uh, joint webinar here between Bookmap and Top Step, a Top Step Trader, uh, we're going to go over and introduce you to Bookmap uh, and, and go over understanding liquidity and order flow here. Okay, so first off, risk disclaimer, uh, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so just a little bit about me and then we'll move on here. Uh, so my name is Bruce. I've been trading for 10 years in a variety of different markets. I'm the order flow specialist here at Bookmap. I lead the trading education uh, with expertise in order flow and market microstructure. Uh, you can reach out to us uh, at our Twitter handle, at bookmap underscore pro. And we're going to look at some trades uh, from, taken from some of our users uh, in Twitter so we can go through some practical applications. Uh, on YouTube, we have plenty of videos there for much more information about bookmap, its functions, and how to, how to read it. Uh, and then um, reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. All right, so today's agenda going through and understanding liquidity and order flow. Uh, first, I'm going to go through an intro uh, to Bookmap. Uh, how many of you are new to Bookmap here? Okay, if you uh, just uh, can give me kind of an idea that you're new. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, quite a few of you. Okay. So, uh, we'll go through uh, very briefly. A, a lot of you are also very familiar uh, with it here. So, we'll go through... Um, uh, pretty briefly, about five minutes or so, uh, an intro of Bookmap, so you understand what we're looking at here, uh, and then uh, get into more more involvement uh, in, in reading the order flow here. Okay, so that's the intro. Uh, what makes price move? Uh, and you're going to have to bear with me on this a little bit, but uh, this is an understanding of the basic market mechanics that a lot of traders, even veteran traders that, that uh, I've dealt with before, uh, really don't quite understand some of the, the market mechanics. So we're going to start there, uh, and then from there we're going to build out, and then we're going to start to look at uh, structures, uh, auction structures, and, and the order flow, and then start to read the context between liquidity and volume and, and the market structures. Okay, we'll also uh, uh, go over some of the one-click trading, uh, and then talk a little bit about uh, uh, some MBO, uh, market by order, uh, data coming from rhythmic uh, for you guys because uh, with top step uh, you have uh, quite quite a nice advantage there um, and uh, and then a q a session okay so all right ah this will get to the end here uh, and we're just going to jump in and and right away look at the uh, uh, the market okay we're going to look at the live market here and go through this process of uh, analysis and reading the other and understanding the order flow what book map is showing us here uh, yes alan this is recorded so uh, I will uh, send the recording to you later so that uh, that you have that. Okay, now looking at the book map chart here, you're probably looking at this for the first time for those of you who are new, and it looks uh, uh, pretty chaotic. Uh, there's a lot going on. It looks very complex. Uh, it's actually not. It's really very straightforward data. Uh, there's only three elements here. Now, I'm going to close up some of the uh, add-on indicators that we have here, like our cumulative volume delta here in the subchart, okay? and the uh, we have a VWAP and a, a point of control uh, indicator here uh, on the chart, which we're going to close as well, and our iceberg detector as well. Okay, and we're just going to simplify this chart so that you understand really what you're looking at here, and it is very simple, very straightforward data. So what we're looking at are only three elements on this book map chart. Okay. It's best bid and offer, these volume dots trading or transacting on that best bid and offer, uh, and then the heat map. And the heat map is the one that throws most people off a bit. Uh, they've never really seen liquidity displayed or visualized this way, and this is an advantage uh, using book map. So all it is is data from your, your dome, your depth of market, the auction, uh, placed on the chart historically. So you can see where they're bidding and offering. Okay, very simple, very straightforward. Uh, and I'm going to take that off, and we're going to go over that in just a minute here. Now we're just looking at two elements on the book map chart, best bid and offer and volume. Okay? So the, the volume dots here shows you precisely where the volume is transacting within that best bid and offer. Now I'm going to take the volume dots off as well. 
Okay, and we're just going to look at best bid and offer. Now, this is a very simple view of the market. Most of us uh, understand exactly what this is here. Okay, now why is it an advantage to display the data this way? It's because it's not aggregated. Okay? I'm going to overlay a candlestick chart and uh, just take a quick look at it. This is a five minute candlestick chart. And what you're getting between each five minutes is only four data points open, high, low, and close. Okay, so you're completely uh, cut off from what's going on within that five minute period. Look at the speed of this move right here. Okay? That is not apparent in the in the candlesticks. And there's all sorts of other microstructure like this little double bottom down here. Okay? You cannot see that in the candlestick either. It's because it's aggregated within that five minute period. Let's just zoom in here and I'll show you. Okay? So between this uh, doji here and then this candle here, there's this little double bottom. Okay, we're going to see a lot of different things here, and this offers tremendous insight to what's going on here because we went down below a consolidated range here, and it rejected. It rejected once, it came back down. It tried again, and it rejected. Okay, we came back up into the range, and we actually came up to the other side of the range. And this is pretty typical. When it rejects from uh, one side of the range, it will... Uh, many times we'll test to the other side of the range. So uh, this kind of detail and transparency is important. We want to see the microstructure or other structural elements. And now let's turn on the volume dots because we want to see the context between structure and volume. And let me bring down the dot size just a little bit here. And uh, you can see that sellers came in, they hit the bid here, uh, and then uh, went back and forth a little bit. Then look at the retest down here. Okay, it didn't even make a lower low. And look at the selling in this little area here. Okay, there's very little selling here, this red dot, just one red dot compared to many over here. Let's zoom into this area because I just want to show you how simple and straightforward this data is. Okay, best offer is the red line. Best bid is the green line. Okay, now the green dots, and let's zoom into an area where we can show that a little bit better. In fact, let me see the dot settings here. What do I have? Let's put it on none or smart. There we go. All right. Many different dot settings or volume um, uh, configurations that you can take a look at. So we'll zoom in here. Now, the, the, the green dots, these are market buy orders. This is the aggressor classification of volume. Okay, so uh, the market buyer uh, here crossed the spread, paid up for it, uh, and they didn't provide liquidity. They took liquidity off of the best offer and a green dot paints here in book map. Red dot is the opposite, it's a market sell. Okay, so very straightforward data here. And we're gonna go through this in the basic uh, microstructures here in, in just a minute and uh, extrapolate that into bigger structures. Uh, but you, we need to understand what these things are here. Now, also the, the um, preciseness, uh, the way that book map is recording this data is important. Uh, if we zoom in here, you'll see that there are many transactions within these bigger dots. You can look at the, um, uh, let's bring up the dot size. You can look at the, or use the data tip tool here and hover over these areas and get precise data of really what occurred here. Okay, volume of 29 for this dot. You get the date, the timestamp here. You can see the timestamp here is 10.03 and 48 seconds, but then it's down to the mic or the uh, nanosecond level. Okay, then what was on the ask at this price level? and then the volume. Okay, so this bigger dot is volume of 29. Okay, smaller dot here, this is volume of one, this one's volume of two. Okay, now we're already down at microsecond level here. Okay, so we're already looking at millions of seconds. This is the environment that Bookmap is actually born in. We came from the HFT environment uh, and recording this data very precisely was important. Okay, how it hit the book. All right now we zoom back out though we don't trade at those levels unless you're looking at your algo performance uh, and then you can see we've just aggregated that visually into a bigger dot and we can see the overall volume is 64. Okay, so that's the way bookmap is displaying the volume. Now in some cases you'll see if we zoom out a little bit more some of these pie displays of volume. Okay, it's just that uh, we give you the overall kind of aggregate view of what happened here so three quarters is selling in this big dot here and a quarter of it is buying. All right, so that's the volume, uh, but when we zoom back in, you'll see we pull it all apart and we see everything that uh, unfolded here. Okay, so that's the volume in book map, and that's the best bid and offer. Those are two elements. Now there's one element still missing here that's really important to understand. 
okay, because we were just looking at this little double bottom here uh, and uh, noting that uh, as sellers came in down here and broke the low, okay, we went sideways for a bit, the sellers did not come down and make a new low or uh, not enough selling here either to accept down here. Buyers come back in and they lift the offer. Okay. And you can see the buyers come in okay. and uh, they continue to buy up into these higher highs. It starts to exhaust out up in these areas here too. Now, what is the element that's missing here? Okay. It's the third element and that's where they're bidding and offering. Okay. We don't have any insight to that. And now we'll come back into this little area around 10.02, 10.03, but we'll go to the current market and uh, we'll take a look at this. Is this like level three data? Um, you know, there's different definitions of level three data. We're looking at complete depth of market here in Bookmap, uh, and um, uh, but yeah, I, I would, uh, I guess you would, you would call it level three, um, uh, you know, data, uh, Tucker, uh, but uh, but or Kevin. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, one more thing uh, I want to uh, mention here. You may be looking at footprint chart. Okay, still. Uh, footprint charts are great because it very precisely shows you where the volume is transacting. Okay, but what's, what you're going to miss though with that footprint chart is you will not see the speed of moves because it's aggregated data within a period. Okay, it might be volume period, it might be time, it might be point, uh, point and figure or rotation, it doesn't matter. It's still aggregated. You're getting less transparency. You're not seeing the play of or context of volume within the structure. And then the biggest part though, is you're not able to see where they're bidding and offering. Okay, it offers tremendous insight here. So let's take the candlestick chart off here and uh, let's look at the current market. And this very precisely uh, uh, define this uh, heat map here. Okay, to the right of this vertical white line, this is the current market. Okay, everything else to the left is historical. Okay, here's our price ladder. Uh, and then uh, this COB column stands for current order book. This is liquidity, these numerical values here. These are contracts at these specific price levels. Okay, they want to be sellers up here. Down below, they want to be buyers. This is our current auction in the market. Okay, now you can see that these numbers are always changing in the dome. Okay, that, that's the, uh, the issue here uh, with the dome is that it doesn't record it because you'll have to remember all of these areas here. How much liquidity is there? Where did they uh, pull it and add it? Uh, did they uh, flip from offer uh, to the bid or vice versa? All of these types of questions are very difficult to answer by looking at the dome. You would have to memorize that. And uh, uh, looking at it over time is rather impossible, okay? So what we do in Bookmap is very simply take these numerical values here, okay? And we transform it into a heat map, okay? The more liquidity there is, the uh, different color that it'll get, okay? The scale of the heat maps in the top center of the chart. Uh, red and orange is very high liquidity, followed by yellow, white, blue, and then black. Okay, so uh, we can immediately see there's very high liquidity down here at 29.26. Also pretty high liquidity up in these areas here, around 30 to 31. Okay. So this is our current state of the auction. Now, when the numbers change, you'll see the heat map change. The interesting part here is that data from the dome is then recorded onto the chart historically, and that's all the heat map is. Okay. So these striations that you see in the heat map here is the adding and pulling of liquidity. This offers you insight to the condition in the auction. You can start to uh, ascertain if they want to trade at these levels or not. Okay, so for example, we had pretty high liquidity up here around 29. Okay, we, just, we just came into this area here, and you can see a lot of this liquidity pulled right before. Okay, so we can answer the question, did they want to trade here? And the answer is no. Okay. It can be rather difficult to read that in the dome. Okay. And then over time and then zooming out, et cetera, uh, it gets uh, very challenging. All right, now you can see they're, they're, they continue to pull here, maybe getting partially filled in some of these areas here, but the target now is up here at 30 and uh, three quarters. Okay. And buyers seem to be pretty interested here. Look at the buying here. The sellers are starting to come in a little bit here as well. Uh, but uh, uh, let's see if they can pop it up into uh, this uh, liquidity here uh, at uh, 30, 31 or 30 and three quarters. Okay. You can see the buyers are in control. We see more volume 
uh, dots here at higher highs. Okay, green dots pulling the market up. Okay, so uh, potential reversal starting to take place here. Okay, we're breaking the structure as well. Uh, anyway, uh, that's the uh, uh, kind of overview here of Bookmap. Uh, what you're looking at uh, in terms of liquidity uh, context between that volume and structure. Okay, uh, guys, I think I'll get to your questions a little bit later, uh, if you don't mind. Um, how? Okay, Michael, yeah, I'll, I'll get to this question, how you're able to um, differentiate between pulling and um, and getting filled. It's, it's really simple. Uh, you just look right at it here, zoom in, and here's what it looks like. Okay, these guys are getting filled. Okay, there's no question about it. Okay, high liquidity. They pulled a little bit here, as you can see, but look at the volume trading right into that high liquidity. Okay, now this is just um, uh, updating a little bit later. That's why you see it off of the best bid and offer. Okay, the volume first, uh, and then it updates the uh, uh, best bid and offer after. Okay, so uh, there's your distinction right there. We know that these guys are now long. Okay, these guys wanted to buy, they bought. Okay, now you see it go through a little bit, but look at the understanding that you can start to uh, uh, comprehend or gain from understanding where they getting where they're getting filled in the book okay is starting to absorb some of that selling pressure okay sellers did go through that area okay but uh, uh, we start to see uh, buyers starting to come in okay and they're starting to provide liquidity down here at 26 and they're not even tested okay so we can start to look at these areas here and uh, gain a lot of insight uh, if they stay in the book or if they pull if they pull this is what it looks like Okay. Now some of it is getting partially filled in here, okay? but uh, you'll just see them pull the liquidity, right? Like in these areas here, see how they're just pulling here. Okay. So um, uh, that's how you can make the distinction. And if they're pulling and if there's still more buying interest, likely price is going to go higher and test into that high liquidity. Okay. So we're really starting to understand now auction. Now look at this auction and what's going on. And this is higher time frame. We don't have to just sit here and look at the uh, current auction uh, um, and market data to gain a lot of insight from the heat map and liquidity uh, because we're zoomed out here and we're looking at, uh, well, since 11 o'clock here, we can zoom out uh, quite a bit more and we can take this data here and understand the auction and use the dome on much, much higher time frames okay, as we zoom out here. All right, so pretty important area around this 32, 32.50, and uh, a pretty pretty nice sell-off here to the to the downside, uh, but buyers are starting to come in, see if they can reach back up into that maybe 32.50 or so. All right, so uh, that's the overview here. Now, there are several other things to take a look at. I've just given you just three elements here on the book map chart. There's all sorts of ways of, of configuring and filtering your volume, your heat map, your heat map settings. Or, uh, you can uh, uh, look at all sorts of details here or less details. It's really up to you uh, and what you prefer. Uh, there's some volume columns here, all sorts of ways of looking at uh, volume here. Let me just show you. Trades counter, quotes counter, quotes delta, a complete trading dome similar to other uh, domes out there, very configurable. Trading notes, time and sales, uh, all sorts of things here, all sorts of ways of configuring it as well. Okay. We also have uh, a trading from the book map chart that I'm, I'm going to go over that uh, a little bit later. And then there's an API as well. And you can develop your own trading strategies. Three come with book map chase, escape, and um, execute. Uh, and then these are other uh, indicators here that uh, uh, are available. Uh, so uh, uh, you can build them yourself uh, if you are uh, uh, good with Java or have a programmer uh, for Java. Uh, own indicators and own um, automated strategies here. Okay, so very robust API. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that as well uh, because uh, you guys with uh, Top Step, uh, together with Rhythmic have uh, have some some really nice advantages. All right, okay, we're up we're right up into our 3250 or so area here, uh, 32 let's call it. Okay, that was the anticipated move just based on what we were reading here. Pretty pretty simple, pretty straightforward read. 
uh, and uh, and well, let's see if the uh, what what kind of occurs up here. See how they're starting to stay in the book a little bit more here. Okay, so starting to get filled partially here. Okay, um, other questions here, guys. I'm going to continue on. I, I want to. Uh, we're going to have to go through this rather quickly. Uh, we don't have a lot of time here, so. Uh, uh, I, I want to uh, get through the material and I'll get to your questions at the end, if you don't mind. Okay. All right. So that's the overview of Bookmap. Uh, now let's just zoom in and we're going to go through those basic market mechanics again uh, and uh, in, in a little more detail here. Okay. Because what makes price move? This is something that a lot of traders, like I've mentioned, they really don't understand. And this is the Bookmap education that and basically the environment that we originally came from uh, and uh, when we started to develop Bookmap actually just for ourselves, okay, from uh, from the quant environment and testing our own algos. Okay. Now, uh, and let's just take the heat map off for the moment here. We're just going to simplify this. Okay, so best offer, best bid, and then transactions, okay. So what makes price move is is really quite simple. You have the best bid and offer, and then there's liquidity on that best bid and offer where they're dealing. Uh, you know, you're always, you always have to buy or sell from somebody, okay, for the transaction to take place. If there's no one there, uh, well, then the next transaction, let's say there's no one here at this uh, 26 uh, and three quarters, and there's someone up here at 29. Well, the next buy transaction, that's where it's going to get filled. It's as simple as that. Okay. Now, there's lots of liquidity in this market, uh, so the, there's uh, several hundreds of contracts here. One price level up here, uh, there's 314 in the in the order book, as we can see. Okay. Now, so what happened here? As we as we kind of zoom in and we go forward, there's 240 here, okay, on the offer, on the best offer. Okay, transaction one has taken place in this view. Okay. Now, 141, there's still 224 here. Okay, that's going to update though. Okay, 236. Okay, and now you can see as that updates here, it is going to, we're going to see the, um, uh, all of that liquidity has transacted. 245 have transacted. Okay, this is a volume column here. Okay, it's a chart range volume. Uh, what is viewable in my chart range here? Okay, so. Now they've taken all the liquidity here at 26 and three quarters. So what happens now? Well, it's the next level. Okay. So as we go forward, is the the next level is what uh, where price goes on the best offer. Okay. That's where they're now offering here because they've taken all of this liquidity. Okay. So now the the bid could can simply stay down here. It doesn't matter. Okay, but it tightens up uh, rather rather quickly, almost instantaneously. And so uh, m many of the markets will do that, especially the S&P. Uh, and uh, the next transaction now takes place here. Okay? It's at the actual same price level. Okay? However, this is a sell okay, that's taking place on the best bid. Okay? So price has not, in, in fact, price has not changed here yet. Okay, but we're seeing a seller come in at the same price level. Okay, this is why, because the best offer went up one tick. Okay, now until another transaction takes place up here at 29.27, and okay, let's just zoom out a little bit. Okay, then price has moved, and there it is. Okay, so now price has moved. Okay, and uh, uh, that's where uh, uh, we are. Well, they came. They came right back in here uh, immediately after with another three lot. Uh, so price price did move up to 27, and then as I go forward, it moved right back down uh, after these transactions took place. Okay, but that move. That's exactly what moved price there. Okay, it's I know very simple and very straightforward, but uh, you know a lot of traders really don't quite understand that. Uh, and and how this can uh, give you insight all the way from this um, kind of micro uh, second uh, view or, or millisecond view on up into a monthly chart. Okay, you're looking at the same basic market mechanics. Okay? It is an auction. All right, so uh, that's the the transactions. Now there's another side that we haven't looked at yet, and that is the liquidity, the heat map. Okay. 
and uh, we'd have to uh, kind of uh, play with this heat map here and bring up the settings quite a bit. Okay, and we're going to look at all the details here. Okay, now it's really blown out, but uh, what we want to look at here uh, and understand is the um, the liquidity taken, okay, or the how the book affects price as well. Now, traditionally, or technically, the only thing that can move price from one level to the next is the aggressor, okay? That's technically. However, you'll note in all sorts of other areas, in fact, we don't need the heat map setting so high. Um, we'll note that uh, you'll see the amount of orders that come into the order book affect price tremendously okay so let's just uh this is where we start to get into spoofing or uh, other other types of things um well in this little area here okay this was kind of new information they were down here in the majority of uh on the um, uh, on the bid at 26 okay price came up it traded into 29 went sideways for a bit and then they started to bid up here now okay at 28 and a quarter and we found still more buyers interested here. They're starting to pull here, as you can see on the offer. See how they're pulling in this little area here? Okay. So we have context now between the aggressor and supply and demand. Where is that demand? It's down, it's down here. It's actually up higher than it was previously. There's more demand at a higher level. That is bullish in this context because we're finding buyers. And they're starting to pull that supply to a higher level. Okay. and price continues to go up here. Okay, so the order book here is the next level. It has tremendous impact on price. Okay, so technically it cannot move it, uh, but uh, it essentially can. Uh, it can um, uh, uh, truly have a, an effect on on price. Okay, now that's a very very simple and straightforward thing to understand what affects, and let's just go to the current market for that. Okay. What affects price here? It's always the orders. Okay, the, the first um, um, level here uh, that's going to affect price is the order book. Okay, where are they bidding and offering? It, it just has to be that way. Uh, it's just, uh, uh, then the orders here by the, the market uh, buys and sells, uh, you, you see the um, uh, reaction and context between the two here. Okay. So it's, it's truly the orders here that is affecting price. Okay. So we're starting to understand now um, supply and demand and the appetite of the aggressor. Now we can see the appetite of the aggressor here is pretty pretty straightforward, right? Look at them. Look at them buying here, okay? and they're they're charging up after this liquidity. They want it, and these guys are actually pulling, and we're we're continuing to see buyers here. So we're going higher. They're looking for 35 to test. Okay, we're probably getting a nice little short squeeze here. Uh, we we're looking at that 32. No, it's still got a little. Yeah, 35 is the uh, a nice little stopping place here. This is where price broke from. Okay, so now we're going to take, for example, uh, that's much higher um, structure to look at, but we're going to take that very simple uh, basic market mechanics that we've just discussed, and we're going to start to understand now. Uh, not only, uh, you know, basic price, price movements here, but structure, okay, and kind of overall, and this works into auction market theory and your volume profile and market profile, okay, and the simplest structure would be to look at something like this, okay, we just see uh, three ticks, uh, basically, uh, going, you know, three tick wide market here, uh, where price seems to be pretty happy right here in the middle, for example, look at them on the offer up here. Okay, do you see buyers up here? No, there were some earlier. Okay, now there's none. You see sellers though interested down here uh, on the on the bid. Okay, see them hitting the bid. Right. So in this little auction right here, you can you can see that we're exhausting out here, and you can see that sellers are starting to ramp up their interest in selling more, and they break price down a tick here. Okay, and actually the best bid went down two ticks. Okay, and then it kind of accepted back up into this range and going sideways here. Okay, now we're, what we're, 
the point of this is start starting to understand structure okay in these basic market mechanics and we're going to extrapolate this into much much higher time frames okay. so what happens down here well we exhaust out on the sell side where are the sellers now okay they're one tick higher and they're they are interested here they are selling okay okay but look at these guys here they're pulling their liquidity uh, and in fact, we can even extrapolate from this, see how they're pulling from this little area here, okay? and uh, actually pulling from this little area here as well. Okay? And so um, uh, they're not even interested down here at 30, okay? So because it, it went from this darker red, uh, kind of orangish red to orange, and they're definitely pulling here at 31. Okay? Now price starts to go away and they add back in. Okay? So. Um, uh, answering the question about the, them wanting to be buyers here and they do not All right so um, anyway getting back to this little range here uh, and understanding this context here which we'll go over in more detail we come back up and we trade in the point of control of this little area here well, we go another tick higher and we start to find some buyers we go one more tick higher and we're still finding buyers Okay. So now buyers are starting to trade at the higher highs here. Okay. And you can start to look at this. You can even look at uh, some of your, uh, your profiles okay. and start to understand uh, uh, why price is moving. When you, when you start to see we're not quite getting it here, we're not getting like a P-shaped uh, profile here. Uh, not yet because of the majority of the selling down here. Okay. But you'll start to see, for example, even in this very, very simple structure, okay, skews in the uh, in the profile skews in the auction here okay and uh, you can start to look for price to test higher okay and explore these higher areas here okay so and there we go and you can see that they uh, they came in and they are reaching for this higher higher liquidity up here at 33 and a quarter and they pulled all right so now let's take that and we just covered and let's look at a much higher time frame. And it is no different. Okay, there's just more transactions and more time and more volume. Okay, so this big area here, we can cover this. Okay, so actually from the open, you, or, or 9.30, you see the drive down very, very quickly. Uh, retest back up to where, where it broke from. Okay, probing that area coming back down and now we see a big structural area down here okay going sideways this entire way here all right so let me clear the drawings here okay now we can start to read also that the, the same uh, and putting the, together the same pieces we were just looking at in that three or four tick range okay now this much bigger range here Okay. Well, where's the volume trading? Right? The majority of it. Who's in control? And there's it's really both on both sides, but you see nice clusters of volume down into these areas here. Okay? Buyers come in and move it right back up, but it, it, it uh, does not sustain that uh, move up here. There's no more buyers up here. What do we do? We drop back down to where price can trade in this range here. This is going to start to build out your most traded level. Your, your median, your point of control. Okay, you see again, price discovery to the downside, it whips right back up, but again, where are the buyers up here? Just very, very little buying up here into these areas, and it comes right back down, okay? Now, in here, we're starting to get some pretty good insight, because you can start to see that, um, uh, and in fact, I'm gonna uh, change this over to our, our volume uh, delta dots. This is a new feature in Bookmap. Uh, just the visualization is much nicer. Uh, so um, uh, you can start to see um, a little bit clearer now. See the selling starting to come in here. And buyers whipping it back and forth here as well. But we're making lower lows now. Okay, And uh, and then here we're starting to get some really nice insight. Okay? So lower, lower highs, lower lows, uh, coming down, looking inevitable to test this area here. We do. And then we here's where we see the break. Look at the sellers come in and they start selling down below that area and hitting it pretty hard. Okay, but we're getting insight and clues to that in the structure just from this little area here. 
Okay? You, can, you can start to understand even this area here in terms of patterns, okay? wedges, for example, okay? breaks of that here. Uh, come back, comes back up, retest that area here, but there's just more selling pressure, not enough buyers. We come back, retest here, and then it breaks. Okay, but you can start to read it in the order flow in this area here. And this is the kind of insight that you're getting. Okay, so uh, patterns are all, always defined here by the order flow. And in fact, if you start to see this kind of pattern here, but you see more buyers up at these highs here, that pattern is going to fail. The likelihood that that pattern is going to fail is much, much higher. You might get the breakdown below it, but it will reject. You'll find buyers come right back in, back to the other side here. They'll break the trend line and it will come back up and test into the high liquidity up here. Okay? Based on reading the transactions and the supply and demand uh, in the book. All right. Okay, so uh, now we, we've covered uh, uh, the basic market mechanics. We've gone through the um, uh, structure. Okay, now we're going to start to talk about um, one more level here, a little deeper, and that is about the context between the um, the aggressors, the volume, okay, and the supply and demand in the order book. Okay. And, and the effect that it has on price. We already mentioned that and talked about that. Look how we came back down into this area here. We're at very high liquidity at 29.35. Okay. And that's where we're actually just coming back up to test right now, okay, currently. And this is exactly why, uh, is because this is where this broke from. And there's a lot of volume and a lot of liquidity uh, probably up in these areas here, but we'll, we'll take a look at the liquidity in just a minute. So we trade back. Uh, your trade down into this area here and look at the buyers on the bid here okay look at the effect that that actually had on price okay so we're sh we're showing more demand at these areas here now this isn't that aggressive in fact uh they're down below 35 uh, they're bidding up, though, uh, in these areas here. They want to be buyers is what it looks like, uh, but they're not really chasing up after it a little bit. Okay, You can see it in, in this area here, starting to chase up after it. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, the um, uh, they start to pull when price comes right back down. Okay, And uh, anyway, we come back up and test to where. Where does it, where does it go? It comes to the, test these areas of higher liquidity. You'll see these areas of high liquidity, um, just like magnets, uh, a lot of the times, uh, that uh, these are the targets, okay? So if you're looking at, for example, a chart without looking at the heat map or liquidity like this, this is what your view looks like, okay? You don't have that insight to what's going on at these areas and why price might uh, do something like this, okay? And where it might go. Okay. And why didn't you see buyers at the top here? Okay, well, why didn't it go higher then? Okay. All of these questions can be answered when you start to look at more data and more understanding of what's going on in the order book. This is the kind of context that you want to understand between volume, structure, and the order book. All right, and we'll see it again and again and again. All right, so you're truly starting to understand now from those basic market mechanics on up into much higher time frames. Okay, now this isn't some sort of indicator. Uh, this is just the market. Okay? It's just uh, just visualizing what's going on in the market. Now we're seeing something really interesting up here now, and we look for this. Uh, and um, uh, you know, Bookmap has education that comes with the. Uh, 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 with the subscription, uh, but uh, this is one of the things we look at here, okay, is this area 35 here is a pivot, and this is where price broke from, okay, sellers were certainly in control, there's no question about it, as they continued to hit the bid, and they just uh, took all of the liquidity, going, just cutting right through the, all of these areas down here, okay, they, they took the liquidity here, 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 and then finally, finally at this point here, uh, as we answered one of those questions, this is where we're starting to see uh, it's starting to slow down a little bit, okay? And down at the, the, the end here. Now, coming back up here, we're, we want to see if the uh, the buyers, and they are, as, as we can see so far, there's a lot of buying pressure. See how they lifted the offer up 
back into this range right now. This is going to be a point of control, no question. I mean, I can already see it uh, here, uh, and uh, we can turn that on uh, as well. So uh, let's just uh, let's just do that. And here's our point of control here. This white, this uh, uh, blue line at 37. Okay. Now we're up above here. Okay. So we we got to what we got to do here is, and if we're going to see this price go higher, okay, we've got to see a lot of buyers. Uh, come back in and support this. Okay, it's and this is the most traded level here is at 37. Okay, we're actually down below it still. Okay, so uh, uh, what we need to see is buyers come back up and start to trade not only into 37 above it though. Okay, this is where they need to and it has to be a lot of volume here. And why is that? Because this is the point of control. This is the most traded level. Okay. Now, if we get those big volume dots, and this is the scenarios that we want to go through and understand in the order flow, and we start to look at these areas, see how the buyers are starting to climb toward that 37 area here. It's going to take quite a bit of volume okay, and buying to move it away from that point of control, okay, because uh, this is an area where it's fair value. Okay. We're starting to read now this in terms of auction market theory. Let's see, uh, a, a quick question I see here, and I'll um, answer this because um, uh, it's on my list here to uh, to cover this, but I'll, I'll just cover it right now. Uh, the E-mini e or the uh, micro uh, will be available in Bookmap. bookmap. Yes, it is, uh, and um, or yes, it will be. It, in fact, it already is for the uh, micro, uh, gold, euro, and um, uh, crude. Okay, but for the uh, stock market uh, indexes, it will be. There's a really nice advantage there as well. I think you guys will really enjoy. You can look at the big contract, the ES here, okay, and then I think it's going to be called the MES, right, for the for the micro. Uh, but you can have your transactions taken place uh, in to the uh, the micro contract. All right. Anyway, uh, we've got to move forward here, uh, and there's still a few things to cover, uh, and then. Um, uh, we'll get to some of these questions as well. Okay. Uh, also, in the um, if you guys are interested, I put into the uh, the chat here uh, the uh, the deal uh, through Top Step Trader that you can get for Bookmap. Okay, so click on the link there, uh, and um, uh, that will give you the um, and, and you can read the different options that are available there. Okay, so anyway, we're looking for a scenario here. A uh, couple different scenarios to. to um, three different ones in fact uh, we're back at the point of control and we might just chop here all day long okay that's one uh, number two is we're looking for big buyer buying volume to lift it up away from this area and establish it maybe above this range up here at 40. okay uh, and uh, we, we need to see a lot of volume trade in it and for that to, for that to happen now if we don't get that buy volume trading and we start to exhaust out, then we're looking for sellers to come in on the other side, okay? And for them to trade and test back into some of these lower areas here. And we'll see it. We'll see that the sellers are starting to pick it up here. Okay? I mean, the, the, the uh, big red dots uh, charging after the liquidity here on the bid. All right, so now, one of the things that I wanted to cover here with you guys too, because uh, uh, you know, at Top Step Trader, you're going to have actually quite quite a nice advantage here uh, that um, uh, for your trading and for uh, debriefing your trading activity, uh, and that is uh, using the Bookmap one-click trading. Okay, so uh, I wanted to cover this because I have learned so much from this, and so have um, many of our traders. Uh, when you trade from the bookmap chart, everything is recorded. Okay, and I'm going to trade right from the bookmap chart here. That you can also trade from the dome, and I'm just going to set some orders. Uh, and um, uh, there's bracketed orders, OCO orders, trailing stops, etc. Uh, we're just going to set some uh, some simple orders here. Uh, and um, uh, you know, there's five here on the offer, and then there's five here down on the bid. And I'll, I'll put some more. Uh, as well. Okay, now the one-click trading here in Bookmap, um, you know, trading in this little area right here, 
And why this is a really nice advantage is because it's recording all of your actions. Okay, now I can lift this, move it here, just left click hold and drag it up. See how it's recorded all of my action there. If this is when I set the order precisely, and this is when I move that order very precisely. Okay, back up to 38 and three quarters. Okay, so when you start to get filled in an area, uh, you'll you'll understand um, you know where where you got filled. Okay, there will be a triangle here, and we'll, I'll go through some trades in just a moment, uh, and then you'll start to understand what were your actions. Did you move your stops? Did you move your targets? Uh, uh, why did you do so? How did you manage this? Why did you get involved in a certain area? Uh, did you chase up after price? Let's say you, you wanted to be a buyer, but you're, uh, you know, you, you moved up here and, and you're, you're chasing after it. Why? Why did you do that? This is an excellent coaching tool. Okay. Uh, if uh, you're, you know, working with uh, uh, your uh, mentors at, at, at Top Step, uh, being able to look at all of your trading activity and debrief it very precisely, okay, which is a really nice advantage here. Okay, so I'm going to just cancel these here, and uh, I want to go over and show you uh, some examples of this. Okay. All right, so actually, uh, this is actually from my Twitter account. I just want to show you, though, um, uh, for example, a, a trade here okay, that, that I took. Okay? These are my reasons here, uh, but uh, you'll, you'll see, um, and let's just zoom in here a bit more. Uh, let's see, let's open this in a new tab so I can go full screen. Okay, there we go. All right, so so the, here, here are my, train, my, my, my actions, in, in fact. So, you know, uh, there was actually a, a pretty important little move back and forth, banging around the, uh, this uh, point of control here. Uh, and then I saw buyers starting to come in here. Okay. So I jumped in. Okay. I'm looking for the buyers to take this, take this higher up into these areas up here. Okay. And I move my stop up very aggressively here. Okay. I'm looking for the buyers to take control now in this little area here. Okay, so uh, I'm willing to take this risk. I, I do not want to take it down to the bottom of this area here. You can even you can see where I move my stop up. Okay, this was my decision. Okay, now I got stopped out on this. Okay, uh, and um, there there's my loss. Now um, you know I can go back and take a look at this. And in fact, um, I still like it. I still like my decision. You can see where the buyers actually started to pick it up right in this little area right here, okay, and uh, lifted it higher. So my stop was just below that little area. Okay, so I'm looking for buyers to support it again, just one tick higher here. Okay, well I got stopped out and price went a couple ticks lower. I jumped right back in. I saw buyers coming in again. Now you can't see it because the the triangle is um, uh, covering it. I jumped right back in. I had the, my reasons for for doing so. Okay, and in this sense here, we can see this worked out pretty nicely. Now my target was originally set here at the, at this liquidity at uh, 94. Okay, I started I started to see the buyers coming in. Uh, I know it's going my direction. I know they're in control here. I moved it back up into and front ran liquidity here up at 96. Okay, and this is where I ended up getting filled. Okay, so anyway, uh, all of my trade uh, actions here, uh, I can explain them and go through them because it's all recorded here onto the chart. This is an excellent debriefing tool. Okay, now I uh, want to show you as well, uh, not just um, uh, that, I, and I can put this into the chat uh, for you guys uh, as well uh, if you want to take a look at some of our other traders, okay, and their trading activity, okay. So, for example, uh, uh, this one here uh, by Walter, uh, he is starting to document uh, his reasoning for getting involved into this trade here, okay, his entry here. He saw very high liquidity here on the, on the bid, and we're not finding sellers uh, transacting into it. In fact, once he starts to see the buyers come in on the other side, he gets in, okay, and he's looking uh, for taking this to where, okay. Actually, uh, uh, he, he was uh, looking for a bigger move uh, because uh, uh, 
you know, looking at the other side of the range, I would probably take half off up here at the top of this range. Okay, he didn't. Uh, he was looking for the next level of higher liquidity up here. Okay, and he started he started to see the uh, the large volume and absorption up in here, and he took his profit. All right, up into higher liquidity. So we're not talking about Fibonacci levels here. We're not talking about uh, uh, you know, floor trader pivots, whatever it might be. This is just where they're bidding and offering. It is the auction that we are reading here okay, and putting together. Now, if those areas of liquidity match up with your trading methods, such as Fibonacci levels, all the better. Okay, Now you have much higher uh, understanding and reasoning behind uh, why price might go into those levels and why you might want to take your uh, profit in some of those levels. Okay, or for example, uh, I don't know where Walter's stop is here, but uh, he may have set it down below uh, this high liquidity here. They have to chew through all of this liquidity or at least uh, chew through it or pull it uh, uh, for him to get stopped out. Okay, so there's his risk reward. Uh, you can see, you can set that up so nicely uh, and um, it's all there with the uh, the one click trading and book map. Okay, he's not using it here in this example, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, there's uh, several other trades and transactions uh, from our traders if you want to take a look here and go through the reasoning. Here's a stock trader as well, uh, and um, uh, he's documented very nicely uh, his decisions here, uh, why he got involved in some of these trades and how he managed uh, his targets here. Target hit, high liquidity, etc. cetera. Uh, beautiful stuff here. Okay, this is Frank. All right, so now we've covered... Um, uh, the one-click uh, trading uh, we talked about the context of the market, uh, and uh, you understand what you're looking at in Bookmap. Um, the um, and we continue to go higher. Look at this. Look at this. Okay, so this was our scenario that we were going through. Okay, now it's not a whole lot, but it's enough, right? We're, the scenario was we're going to have to see a lot of buy volume here pull this higher. Okay, and if so, then we'd start targeting higher liquidity here. Okay. This is the scenario that played out. Okay, so I'm still looking for it to go higher. Okay. I'm looking for 40. All right, and let's zoom out a little bit and let's start to look at bigger structural areas now too. Okay. So 40 looks pretty good, um, and um, uh, yeah, the next level after that would probably 42. Okay. And then after that, we can get back up into 45 area. Uh, this is all pre-market here, of course. Here's our 930 open here. Okay. All right. So starting to understand the auction and starting to understand these, uh, uh, you know, where they're bidding and offering and the appetite uh, of these uh, buyers and sellers here. Okay. And yeah, it's looking good. Okay. We're almost at uh, at 40 as it is. Okay. And we, we were just talking about that. Okay. Very, very simple read. Okay. Let's put put more context together here as well. Okay. Look at them here on the bid. They're bidding up in these areas here. Okay. So, uh, in fact, you can see a bit of a flip here. Uh, there was liquidity here on the offer at around 35. Now it's flipped over to the bid. Now they've been bidding up actually the entire way. Okay. So uh, this is uh, pretty pretty bullish here. All right. So anyway, uh, putting those pieces together uh, and then starting to uh, project. Uh, and uh, anticipate where we think price is going to go. All right. So let's uh, go over one one more thing here. We've almost been going uh, an hour here, uh, and then I'll just get to your questions. Um, I wanted to mention this uh, because uh, you guys uh, have um, your your excellent data feed uh, with um, uh, with Rhythmic uh, together with Top Step. Uh, now, this is something that from the CME group that they uh, um, offered, uh, I think, a couple of years ago. Uh, however, uh, I don't see a lot of uh, people taking advantage of this. Uh, market by order, there are there's much more information now in transparency that is coming from the CME with this market by order, okay, this MBO data here. Okay? Uh, it is rhythmic that the combination between rhythmic and the CME and bookmap uh, that you're able to read and use this information to your advantage. And what kind of advantage does it give you? You can now start to understand larger players, uh, precisely larger players. And we have an indicator 
uh, and I, I, I cringe to say indicator because um, indicators are usually some sort of derivative. Uh, this is not some sort of derivative. It is very objective market data. We can read the, the market by order data now. Okay, We can know precisely when a stop run has taken place. Precisely. Okay, You'll see the triggers of all of the stops and they're tagged with a stop order. We can know precisely when an iceberg is getting hit. Okay, it's tagged, uh, and we can also uh, know precisely when that iceberg order has filled completely. Okay, this is all very objective data. Uh, this is another level of transparency that you're getting access to. Okay, so I don't know if that's what you you consider the question about uh, level three data, uh, but this is something very unique and very very powerful. Uh, and uh, uh, I'll show you where you can even get access to that right now within Bookmap. Okay, we're offering a, a free uh, insight or trial to it, uh, and it's here in the Bookmap uh, forum. Now this is the wiki. Uh, let's go to the uh, forum. Okay, so just a moment here. All right, so just go to bookmap.com slash forum and then go to bookmap API here. Okay, if you're interested in this, okay, there's all sorts of information about it here. Okay, there's also information uh, in the, uh, the the wiki. All right, so uh, uh, you can scroll down here and uh, you can take a look at, um, there's a liquidity tracker here, but it's this indicator here, okay? Uh, advanced CBD, okay, stops icebergs, large orders. Okay, uh, more information also in our wiki. Uh, if you just click here, uh, bookmap.com wiki, uh, and then um, slash wiki, and then go to bookmap API. All right. So I just wanted to mention that uh, because uh, this is uh, very unique uh, and it is uh, available now. All right. Okay. Just shy of uh, 2940 here, they did not have the uh, 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 wherewithal to uh, to trade up into it. Getting getting a pullback right now. Okay. Uh, and where where do we think the pullback is going to go? Well, the liquidity here, back to point of control. In fact, it looks pretty good. Um, all right, so let me get to your questions now. Okay. Um, okay, we answered uh, Michael your question about pulling and and um, getting filled. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, with the candlesticks, yeah, you can plot one one uh, minute, five minute, um, whatever. Uh, it's it, it's up to you. Uh, however, you you want to view your your candles. Okay, so you have um, it's it's all time based though. It's not uh, volume or anything like that. All right. Okay. Um, let's see. Or one hour. Yeah, that's uh, possible as well. What options are available there in Bookmap? Uh, I, I assume you're talking about pricing. Okay, so I put that into the chat there. Uh, that uh, you can you can take a look. Okay, and I'll put it back in if you want. So here you go. Okay, so that's uh, from the affiliate link through Top Step. That 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 uh, uh, is not available from our website. It's available uh, only through um, Top Step. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Yeah, well, um, there's a question here about the um, current order book and the depth. Yeah, you only see, um, you're only looking at limited depth. I mean, uh, looking here in Rhythmic, uh, for example, and there's others, other data feeds uh, as well that offer a full depth like DX feed. But those are the only two actually that I know that offer it for the CME. Okay, so, uh, you know, CQG offers full depth of market for COMEX and NYMEX exchanges, but not the CME. So you're not going to see these levels here as being live way up here. You'll see these numbers change. See how it just went from 32 to 40 up here? Okay. This is live. This is way outside of uh, 10. Well, outside enough. Okay, but you'll see all of these levels here. We'll zoom vertically, and all of these levels, every now and then you'll see them change here as well. Okay, way outside.
Yeah, yeah. So then that's that's correct. The, the it, you're not seeing it because your your uh, your data provider is not is not offering full depth of market. Okay, this is a really big advantage. Okay? More transparency is is being offered now to uh, retail traders. This is a tremendous advantage for us. Okay? The way that uh, this data is is being visualized and and uh, access though is 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 the key here. Okay? Being able to, uh, to to comprehend it easily and see it and uh, be able to react react to it. Uh, Andre, I'll send you the link to the webinar later. Okay. Uh, thank you, Michael, uh, for the compliments there. <laughs> Isn't this for four hours? <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, no, we got to end it up here in just uh, a few minutes. Um, but uh, just wanted, I wanted to get to your questions. I, I really, I really wanted to get to uh, uh, you, top step traders. I, I wanted to show you that one click trading, though, it's a very powerful debriefing tool. You're going to learn so much about your trading. Uh, and your decision making uh, when you can record all of your trading activity, okay, and it's on the chart, then you can really start to question, why did I do this, and what can I learn from it, and how can I improve it next time? Just a tr tremendous tool. Um, so, uh, let's see here, another question, is the sharp delta indicator? Okay, yeah, no, I, I'm not showing, I, I close the... Uh, uh, cumulative volume delta here uh, on purpose. Okay, there's all sorts of different settings for this cumulative volume delta as well. Uh, uh, let me show you here. I didn't. I didn't show you guys the um, uh, the studies configuration. It's this tool up here, this microscope. There's all sorts of different ways of looking at the candlesticks, for example. That'll answer that question on the candlesticks. Um, you know, the size of it, the, the the minutes that you can or hours you can put in here, for example. Uh, there's a correlation tracker with the Bookmap Global Plus. Uh, the cumulative volume delta is here. There's all sorts of settings and resets of, of looking at this and multiple. You can put in multiple cumulative volume deltas. Uh, so um, uh, there's that. Uh, some heat map settings that we went through. Uh, iceberg detector, large lot tracker. Uh, these are our add-ons here. These are proprietary indicators we developed that you get with the Bookmap Global Plus. Um, trade alert, uh, imbalance indicator. Um, yeah, the view app, and then looking at the volume, uh, all sorts of different ways of filtering for that volume as well. Not only through the clustering, but also minimum size and um, uh, the uh, minimum minimum trade size, and then also minimum uh, displayed volume. Which I, I'm going to veer away from that one and maybe explain another time if you guys are interested. Okay, uh, let's see here. A few more questions, and uh, we'll wrap it up. Can you use range charts? Uh, Donovan, so this is not um, about, there is no time frame here in Bookmap because we don't aggregate the data. Okay? So it's just time just flowing here. Okay? Now, there are time slices here uh, in the uh, in the Bookmap um, uh, toolbar. And the way it works, okay, let me close this up here. Uh, the way it works uh, is the viewable chart range here is what is going to be displayed in the time slice. So let's say I want to look at just 15 minutes of data within my viewable range. Choose 15. Now from here, from the left point of the chart to current market is 15 minutes of data, always, consistently. All right. So uh, anyway, there, are, like I said, no, there are no time frames here. Uh, it's just best bid and offer. Um, let's see on the programming side. Um, yeah, I would I would point you again, I think, to the wiki as well as the um, uh, uh, the forum uh, for for looking uh, into more questions on that. OK, so uh, let me show you that again. OK, that uh, bookmap.com slash wiki. OK, simple as that or uh, bookmap.com slash forum uh, is simple as that. And that'll take you to the um, uh, you know, to the forum. Okay. All right. And let's see a few more questions and then uh, I think we'll be finished here. Uh, the micro gold uh, symbol and book map, where can you find it? Um, well, yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll need to input the, uh, the proper, um, 
uh, uh, you know, symbol name, uh, and it, it, that depends on the broker as well, okay, or data provider. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll send a link to you guys. Um, we'll email you a link here to the recording of the webinar. All right. Okay. Um, Wolf FX. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm not quite sure exactly what you're you're talking about there. Um, how much does the data cost? Th that will vary, uh, Mahesh, uh, between the different data providers. Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, maybe you guys are are you know trading the uh, uh, currency futures. Okay, well, you know, I have the 6E up here if you want to take a quick look at that. Okay, now these markets trade a little bit differently, uh, and, um, uh, you know, they're heavily hedged. Uh, but um, uh, anyway, it's, it's the same same stuff that you're looking at here that we covered uh, in the ES. Okay, it's just different, uh, different markets, though. They obviously, you know, different liquidity, uh, and uh, that's going to, you know, really, uh, and different players uh, as well. So we're really talking about the details of what's going on in each market and each market's uh, uh, different characteristics uh, that you'll see, okay? Yeah, the DX feed offers that full depth, okay, as a data uh, data provider, All right? So you can connect Bookmap to uh, to that. There are many brokers offering Bookmap. Okay, so reach out to your broker and ask. Uh, so uh, you'll you'll find it out there somewhere. Uh, and if not, just uh, uh, here. Let me let me take you to the website here. This will be the easiest to answer. Okay. So uh, on our website here, Bookmap.com, uh, if you just go to connectivity and scroll down here, uh, these are all the ways of connecting Bookmap. Okay, that's available. Okay. Now, if you're a stock trader, it's you can also connect to Bookmap. Uh, digital currencies as well, uh, the data is free, so you don't have to worry about it. It's not listed here. Uh, but uh, DX feed is the only way to connect to U.S. equities data. Okay, you will need to subscribe to this for U.S. equities, okay, if you're an equities trader. Um, now, they also offer it for futures, though, too. Okay, so uh, they, they cover both. Okay, and I also want to show you guys... I get back to this here. Uh, yeah. So if you're interested, uh, I'll put this back into the um, um, to the chat here. Okay. So uh, if you're interested in the pricing details there. Okay. Now th those are the, those are the specials here. The the specials are listed here. Okay. Global Plus for 147 for the first three months, and then it's 297. So you're getting half off for three months, or you can get Global Plus. This, this includes all of the add-on indicators. Okay, for uh, basically half the cost as well for the first year, right? Uh, and the, or you can buy it lifetime here. Uh, and and uh, if you get the global version for lifetime, it's not global plus, it's global, but you'll get the add-on package free for the first year. Okay, now that's good for version six, seven, and the future release of eight. All right, so those are the details on that. All right, I think I've answered your questions. Uh, does it connect to Ninja? Yes, it, it, you can also connect in, to Ninja um, uh, through the API of Ninja. Uh, I don't recommend it though, or we don't recommend it uh, because the data is gonna be touched by their uh, their software. So go with the, any links in between the exchange uh, and Bookmap uh, is most likely it's going to affect the data some way, okay, or, you know, has that potential, and right? So uh, uh, we want to try to get the cleanest, best, uh, most reliable data and transparent information that we can. Uh, so is Bookmap Global Lifetime nothing to be paid ever? Um, yeah, it's uh, uh, Mahesh, yes, that's, that's correct. Um, uh, the only thing, though, is like it is uh, good for uh, future release of, well, current release, current data, and then future release of eight. So, I mean, it will be 
uh, up to date for several years. Okay, but uh, if you wanted then to upgrade to like Bookmap 9 and 10 several years from now, uh, for example, uh, you can, uh, it will be just like, a, you know, purchasing Microsoft Office or something like uh, in the past where you just, you know, you can upgrade, right? So you don't have to pay, you know, a whole lot, but uh, you will have to upgrade. And we haven't even, you know, crossed that bridge yet. Right? So um, uh, when is when is 8 expected? I don't even have a clue. Uh, you know, I haven't even heard talk about 8 yet. Okay, so like I said, this is going to be good for, you know, several years to come. All right, guys, so I think that's it. Uh, we're going for um, oh, about an hour and 15. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for the uh, opportunity uh, to uh, to present to you guys. And uh, yeah, I hope that uh, you find, uh, you know, this uh, intriguing or interesting and, and you know, want to give it a try. Um, like I said, this is a good time for, uh, for retail traders. Uh, there's much more transparency uh, being offered in the marketplace here, and we can be very nimble uh, with our, uh, uh, our trading compared to some of those larger players. Okay? And we're getting a lot of insight here. Uh, so um, um, anyway, yeah, I'll uh, email you guys the uh, recording uh, soon, uh, later today, and uh, you guys can take a look at it. Thank you very much for coming. Bye-bye.